Okay. In the last lecture, we talked about ge thinking geometrically about linear maps and about matrix multiplication. And in this lecture, I'm going to talk about just taking some very specific uh, linear maps that come up and often in geometry and thinking of, and what the formulas for those specific maps are. And the first one I want to talk about is a very simple one. <clears throat> it's dilation. So what dilation does is it just takes a vector and multiplies it by a scalar. Every vector gets multiplied by the same scalar. So this arrow on the right is the same direction as this arrow on the left, but twice as long. And every vector and every point over here has been multiplied by a factor of two compared to the corresponding point over here. And the formula for that is very simple. It's just C times the identity matrix. So C is on a diagonal and zero is off the diagonal. A bit more interesting is a rotation. So here I've taken the state of Michigan and rotated it by about 30, 40 degrees. So let's think through what the formula for that is going to be. So here what I've drawn is I've taken just the standard coordinate axes, just the, uh, so here I've taken the unit vectors in the horizontal and vertical direction and I have rotated them by some angle theta. Moving this vector to here and this vector to here. And remember, the columns of a matrix tell you where one zero goes and where zero one goes. So One zero over here rotated to cosine theta sine theta over here. And let's make those look like vectors. Oops. Sorry. So here's one zero and it rotates to position cosine theta sine theta. And over here, we have zero, one, and that rotates to negative sine theta, cosine theta. And so the and if you're wondering where did those come from, I'm just, where did I get those formulas from? I'm just looking at right triangles. So, whoops. So here's a right triangle and here's another right triangle. And I'm just using basic trig functions in those right triangles. So uh, this, Vector up here is cosine theta sine theta using this right triangle. And so the first column of my matrix is going to be cosine theta sine theta. And the second column of my matrix is going to be negative sine theta cosine theta. You can see that it's negative because I am on the left side of the vertical axis here. I have gone into the negative X range. Okay, so that's the formula for a two-dimensional rotation is you have a cosine theta, sine theta in one column and a minus sine theta, cosine theta in the other. Uh, if we want to rotate in three dimensions around one of the standard axes, say the z-axis, well, the z-axis just stays put, right? The vector zero, zero, one in the z-direction stays exactly where it is as I rotate around it. So that third column here is zero, zero, one, reflecting the fact that that z-axis is staying put. And the other two columns, we're seeing the same cosine, sine, negative sine, cosine pattern as before. The formula for rotating around something that's not one of the axes is a bit messy, and I'm going to leave it off, at least for now. Okay, and now 
So we've done dilation, we've done rotation, and now I'm going to come to one which is really important and a bit more complicated. So this is the notion of orthogonal projection. It's going to come up a lot. So orthogonal projection by itself is hard to draw, but I'll try to convey what it does to you. And then we'll talk about some other things you can build out of the orthogonal projection formula like reflection, which are much more drawable. Okay, so what do we mean by orthogonal projection? So let's fix some vector V um, and we will use that vector V to break other vectors up into parts. So here's the vector V. It's going from zero to V. That's the vector V. And now we're going to take any other vector. Let's call it X. And we're going to break X up into two parts. X is going to be the sum of a part parallel to V, which I'm writing X parallel, oops, and a part perpendicular to V, which I'm writing X perpendicular. And so you see X parallel, X parallel and X perpendicular are two sides of a rectangle and the diagonal is X. And X parallel points along V. Okay, so orthogonal projection projection of X onto V is this X parallel. Okay, what I wanna talk about is how do we compute this X parallel? Okay, so we know it's gonna be some multiple of V, right? Look back at that slide a moment again. X parallel goes along the vector V. So it's gonna be some scalar multiple of V. And the trick to compute what scalar it is, is to take a dot product. So if we compute V dot X, that's gonna be V dot X parallel plus V dot X perpendicular and dot product distributes over addition. So that's V dot X parallel plus V dot X perpendicular, but Since V and X perpendicular are perpendicular, their dot product is zero. And so this just comes down to V dot X parallel, which is to say C V dot V. And so then we can solve for C, just dividing through by V dot V, and give it C is the ratio between V dot X and V dot V. Okay, and then plugging that C into the formula for X parallel, so plugging, plugging this expression here in for this C here, we see that X parallel is this scalar multiple of V and X perpendicular is X minus X parallel. Uh, by the way, dot products are something we're going to really seriously start studying in chapter five, but I'm going to assume that you've all seen them at least a little bit so that I can write things like this now. If you've never seen dot product before, that's fine. Uh, you definitely can look it up on Wikipedia or any place else and learn the basics of dot product. Okay, uh, I'm just going to take the formula over here, this formula here, and rewrite it in a couple of ways. So this first version, this is what we had on the previous slide. X parallel is a scalar multiple of V and here's the scalar that it is. I can rewrite V dot X as V transpose times X. That's useful sometimes. And then also let's write out what this looks like very explicitly as a vector in terms component by component. 
if V is V1, V2, V3, then V dot V, that's going to be V1 squared plus V2 squared plus V3 squared. V dot X, that's going to be this expression over here, V1, X1 plus V2, X2 plus V3, X3. And here's the vector V copied over here. And then finally, I've rewritten this yet one more time. Um, over here, we see using matrices, the same formula that we saw here. So for example, the first entry is going to be the V1 squared times X1 plus V1 V2 times X2 plus V1 V3 times X3. And that's exactly what you get if you multiply out this blue scalar by the first entry of this yellow vector. And, okay, um, the map which sends X to X parallel is a linear map. Remember that just means the map we can give as a matrix. And the matrix in question is exactly the matrix you saw in this previous slide. Here it is over here. It's V1 squared, V1, V2, V1, V3, et cetera, times one over V1 squared plus V2 squared plus V3 squared. Okay, so I said, and this is a formula that really is gonna come up a lot. Orthogonal projection is something we use for a lot of things. I'm going to tell you just one thing we use it for next, which is we use it to write down reflection. But we're gonna keep using orthogonal projection for many different purposes throughout the course. So here is reflection. So here's the vector V. Here's the mirror. My mirror is perpendicular to V. And I have reflected over my mirror. So that means that the points that are right on the mirror, like this part of the UP up here, get sent to themselves but the things that are on this side of the mirror get sent to the other side of the mirror and vice versa. So what is the formula for this? Well, the way to think it through is by taking a vector X and breaking it into its parallel and perpendicular parts. So let's do that. So here is a vector pointing towards Ann Arbor. And here is the parallel, oh, sorry, here's the perpendicular part of that vector, perpendicular to V. And here is the parallel part of that vector, parallel to V. When we reflect, in the reflected picture, the mirror image of Ann Arbor is over here. And what's happened is that the part parallel to V has switched signs and points in the opposite direction now, but the part perpendicular to V stays exactly as it was. So this blue vector stayed exactly the same, stayed this blue vector, but this maze vector has now turned into a vector pointing in the negative in that direction. So what I've, I've written down here is a formula, x parallel, whoops, x parallel plus x perpendicular turns into minus x parallel plus x perpendicular. So the maze switches signs, x parallel switches signs, but the blue stays the same, x perpendicular stays the same. And just to rewrite that a little, so minus x parallel plus x perpendicular, or well, can we write that as minus x parallel plus x minus x parallel or x minus twice x parallel. And here's that formula for x parallel again. So in terms of matrices, this x, that's x going to x, that's just the identity map. So here's identity and here is minus twice the orthogonal projection matrix. Or to be more explicit, 
here's the identity, and then here is twice the orthogonal projection matrix. So this is our first example of how we could use orthogonal projection to think through what a linear map should be. The formula for this reflection is kind of confusing, but it's not too bad if we think separately about, okay, how does the parallel part to V reflect and how does the perpendicular part to V reflect? Okay. Uh, those aren't the only geometric maps you might care about. If you read section 2.2 of a textbook, it'll give you a few more, but those are the most important ones and we are going to stop there. Have a good day.